those who are born and don't get the knowledge of God, does that mean that is a separation that man has to suffer since the separation in the garden? Is that why some are born and don't get to hear and missionaries go out to tell them because of that separation? Let me get your question clearly, Ella. They, they that are born, you mean naturally born, yes. into this world, yes. on the earth, they're inhabitants. Okay, say it from there now. Yes. Some are born without ever hearing about the word of God for right. part of their life. Right. Others are born, and even though they hear it, they don't receive it. But are those people who have never heard it, is it because of some separation from God going back to the time yes. of Adam and Eve? Well, I can I can tell you where remember the antediluvian world in Genesis the sixth chapter, the flood, Noah. There were only eight people according to the biblical account, and I believe the Bible. Amen. Somebody said, uh, you know, there was another civilization, there was another, uh, there were people outside. Well, friend, you're gonna have to go outside the Bible to get that together. But you stay within the lens of the Bible. He said, the end of all flesh is come before me. All flesh. Now, there were only eight in that ark. If the end of all flesh included all living human existence, then I believe the Bible. They perished outside of that ark. How could there have been another civilization? Oh, and I've heard this. I just talked, in fact, the other day to someone that said, Brother Marlowe, why, there were cities, there were civilizations outside of the garden, outside. Then how could the first man, Adam, how could there be cities, civilization, when the Bible said the first man, Adam? Adam was the first man created. Amen. So it's not, a, it's not a biblical doctrine, is what I'm saying. But here, um, in Genesis 6, and then you go after the flood, Sister Ella, yes. and, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to read all the scriptures, but I'm going to give you the chapter reference of Genesis 6, and the flood took place, and then, and, um, uh, and Genesis, um, I'm trying to get that exact scripture, uh, uh, 12, 13. is it 12, 13? No, Genesis 6, 12, and 13. Yeah, but uh, later, after the flood, uh, Genesis 6 is the flood, and then uh, the sin uh, takes place. And after after the sin, which the sixth chapter to the eighth chapter is the flood, uh, then in... Then, um, no, it's after the, it's after the Noah sins when he um, now verse 19 of chapter 9 these are the three sons of Noah and of them and notice this verse 19 chapter 9 these are the three sons of Noah and of them was the whole earth overspread. They populated the whole earth out of these three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jacob. Now, let's see what Noah did. And Noah began to be a husbandman, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine, and was drunken, and in his drunken state he sent. He was uncovered. He lost the covering of God. He lost the covering of God. He was uncovered through drunkenness, through uh, in his, in his, his inability to control his appetite, his, his lust in his body for the food of that vineyard. And, Ham, and, and he was uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his brethren without. He looked upon his nakedness. And Shem and Japheth 
took a garment, now he had told them the nakedness, laid it upon both their shoulders, and went backward. No, it was back here. They went backwards. They never saw his nakedness. They never sinned. They never defiled themselves. But Ham did. And they covered Noah's nakedness. And when they, when they, and Noah awoke from his wine, and he knew what his younger son had done unto him. Now, had done unto him. The Bible, um, in the book of Leviticus, describes a man uncovering the nakedness of his father. 18 and 8. What is it? 18 and 8. 18 and 8. 18 and 8. It wasn't him just looking on his father's body. Read 18 and 8. You have it? The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. Leviticus 18 and 8. And the nakedness of thy father's wife shall thou not. It is thy father's nakedness. Sin was committed by Noah who was in his drunken state in his own house. Sin. Ham uncovered his father's nakedness. But it involved incest, the worst of sins in the scripture in the house of Noah. Uh, you may have never seen that before. God is fair. God would not judge a man with a penalty. He judged Ham with for just observing the human nakedness of his father and that because his father was drunken and he went into the tent and saw him. He didn't plan that. And that God would not have judged him just for that vision, just for seeing but you, when you connect Leviticus 18 and 8 with that, Brother the nakedness of thy father's wife, thou shalt not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. Mm -hmm. And sin was committed. 2011 is better on that. All right. So and, that. and the man that lies with his father's wife hath committed his father's neck, uncovered his father's neck, nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Man that lied with his father's wife. And the man that lied with his father's wife has uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death. See, that's plain. That's plain. See, the Bible is plain. So that sin is a sin that we should never, never, never go near as the church of the living God. Because God judged Ham severely. He said, Cursed be Canaan. Notice that? Who was Canaan? Canaan was the offspring of that sin. He was the offspring, he was the child born to the incest of the, the son and the mother. He would and 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 he cursed Noah, cursed Canaan. That generation was cursed. Now there's three boys. Of them, the whole earth was overspread. When you see a nation that is turned away from Christianity, will not accept and does not promulgate, and their children teach their children, and their children their children, to worship another God, to worship another being, you say, oh, God is unfair to judge them. No, God isn't unfair. In the seed life, in the genealogy, sin was committed. Sin judges a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. Uh, uh, God is not unfair. These three boys overspread the earth. But their sin overspread the earth. Now there's nations, there's generations, there's genealogies that are traced by God. See, God knows genealogies. God knows seed life. God, God knows generations. And uh, don't, don't judge God as being unfair if you say, well, but they, uh, they turned away, 
they don't worship God. And the reason they don't is because God judged that. Did God not? Did not God judge Moab? Yeah. The, the, the the two sons of incest of Lot. Lot, the, the daughters of Lot, when they made Lot drunken, and uh, Ammon, and, uh, and and was it Ammon and Moab, wasn't it? The two sons, both of them born of incest, both of them born of sin. Did not God judge them? Are they not today that seed life gone uh, from active nations, yet it's buried in seed life. Moab is still buried in seed life. He's still buried in genealogy. So is Ammon. But God is not unfair. Sin, the wages of sin is death. That's a principle. That's the law of God. And so, um, when Cedrella, am I answering your question? Yes, right then you just did it because that separation. God separated that's why them. these are now born without getting a chance to hear, or those that hear don't listen. They're in that cursed seed. They're in that curse. Thank you. They're in that cursed seed. Yes. Uh, God is not unfair. No. Uh, these three boys stood before God. They were preserved. They were kept in the ark. They had free will. One of them sin and and the other two chose not to so there is a generation that god remembers because they did not look upon their father's nakedness they did not commit that sin that god hates god hates that sin that's a sin hated of god uh, god wants a pure family god wants a pure family god hates sin in a family God loves righteousness in a family. So, so I, that, that's good, okay? Um, all right. Um, if, if, if we're not through there, we'll stay there. But uh, if, we, if we're through, um, or not on that thought, Stella had her thought settled, I think. Yes, thank you, Brother Marlowe. Yes. But I think that it's important for us to know that everybody that is born is not born in his likeness and his image. No, uh, we lost his likeness. See, when Adam right. sinned in the garden, when Adam sinned in the garden, no creation retained his likeness. They retained uh, his form. Uh, let us make man in our image form and after our likeness. They, they, they lost that likeness of God. Uh, no man has that. When he's born in this world, that's why... Every man, no matter if that if that seed is of a seed that God has predestinated or chosen, they still have to be born again. They still have to be born again. There can be uh, Jesus said, "Except a man be born again." Third chapter of John, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born of the water. And of the Spirit, he can't enter into the kingdom of God. Conversion allows you to see the kingdom of God. The baptism of the Holy Ghost, the washing of water by the Word, brings you into the kingdom of God. You can see it, but God wants you to go into it. That's powerful, isn't it? Powerful. It's powerful. And I, I, I love the Word of God. I thank God he spared me to hear his word. I thank God there was one minister I met that wasn't afraid to teach me the Bible. It's so covered up today. You can't hardly hear it. Well, that's fulfilling scripture. Isn't it? That in the last days there would be a famine, not of the meat and drink, but of hearing of the word of God. The word of God. We can usually get meat and bring, in fact, I, I get too much. I, I found a cherry pie this afternoon. And, oh, and, I, found you know, and I shouldn't have brought it home, but mm -hmm. she doesn't partake of it, but I did. You know, I should have left it alone. But, uh, you know, uh, but the, the thing is that uh, there's a famine for the hearing of the Word of God. The Word of God. The 
slice your precious. So, uh, one more scripture, and we're going to let you all move home. Um, Revelation 6 and 9, and uh, uh, this is, a, we'll, we'll continue our study next week on eternal life and immortality. And then we're going to Ruth, the book of Ruth, a type of the Gentile church. That will be interesting. That will be interesting, because the Gentile church is what I'm in. I'm a part of the Gentile church. I'm not a part of Judaism. I'm a part of the Gentile church. I know, <laughs> I've met a lot of brethren, and you have two brothers in Emory, and most of us have that have been in ministry. They want to bring the church back into Judaism. Yeah, all the time. All the time trying to get us back in Judaism. That's on the Jews still yeah. under a curse. <laughs> and I'm not going to go back into Judaism. They rejected Jesus Christ. Brother Lee. Just a little quick thought. Paul the Apostle said to Timothy, he said, save thyself. Save thyself. Preach to them. Save thyself, thyself from this untoward generation. I'd like to say to everybody here, you better save yourself from this untoward. They're not toward God. Praise God. And from an untoward generation. Revelation 6. Uh, and eight, all right? We'll get that real quickly, and I'll let you ponder it. Before we go. Okay. Okay. Revelation six and eight. Okay. And I look, and behold, a pale horse. Now we can't possibly get into all four horses of that. Put your eye on, the, on one horse on the track. <laughs> There's four running. There's the white, the red, the black, and the pale. What's the white? But uh, let's keep your eye on this pale horse tonight. And this is the fourth horse. And I looked and behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was dead. He's the rider. The horse is pale, anemic. And hell followed with him. So death and hell were combined together there. And power was given unto them, death and hell, for the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. Now, I'm going to go to the four horses and next week, I, if I get into those horses, I'm going to be not get to the ninth verse, and that's where I'm going to go. But you just think of this, and I'll give you this. Horse denotes power. The church is pictured in the Old Testament as a horse, a powerful animal, in parabolic language. I'll leave it at that. I'll let you ponder that. Verse 9 said, And when he opened the fifth seal, Remember, there are seven seals, prophetic dispensations of time. A seal is a prophetic dispensation of time in the book of Revelation. We are living now at the opening of the seventh seal, the last seal. Now we'll get into that. Revelation 8 uh, concludes the seven seals. Time dispensation. We're living in the close of the sixth, looking right in to the prophetic time of the seventh, the last seal. Christ and his coming will open the seventh seal, beginning the millennium or the Sabbath day, the 1,000 year reign of Christ. All right? But in the ninth verse, we open the fifth seal. So we are now past the fifth seal of time. The fifth seal was opened in the days of Martin Luther in the year of the, of the 15th century when Martin Luther, the reformer that God raised up and gave him the message of the just shall live by faith. 